What's up guys, this is AppleTech752, and a lot of you were super successful bypassing your A5 devices with Sliver 5.4, which I love to hear, that's totally awesome, but I've also gotten a lot of questions about how you can actually use your device after the bypass is complete. As you can see in this case, I have my iPod Touch 5th generation connected, but if I open up iTunes, iTunes tells me that I'm still activation locked. So you know it's hard to actually put stuff like music and movies and whatever else you might want on your actual device and use it. In this video I'm going to show you how to fix iTunes and make it work perfectly and I'm also going to show you how to jailbreak with Phoenix and get that Phoenix icon on your home screen. I can't wait to get straight into this, let's do it. So here we are on macOS High Sierra. You will need either High Sierra or Mojave for this version of Sliver. You cannot use Catalina or Big Sur because those two versions are too new and too secure for Sliver to work properly. So if you have High Sierra Mojave, you're all set. And as you can see, iTunes is telling us that we are activation locked, but by the time we're finished with this tutorial, iTunes is gonna let us use our device and actually sync music to our device. So again, guys, this is gonna be incredible. Let's jump straight into it. So I'm gonna quit iTunes, and as you can see, I have Sliver version 5.5.dmg on my desktop. That is the latest version. You can download it from appletech752.com. Just double click it to open. And in just a moment, we're going to get a pop-up just like this. Yes, I did change the icon. And now all you have to do is open up a terminal window and open up your applications folder by going File, New Finder window, and going into Applications. And here, once we have the terminal window and our applications folder, all you have to do is drag Sliver into your applications folder and replace whatever version existed before this version. Enter your computer password. That's just the same password you use to log into your Mac. And in just a moment here, we're gonna get Sliver in our applications folder. We can start typing Sliver on our keyboard to locate it, then right click and select show package contents, find that resources folder, and then in terminal type sudo chmod-r755, and then drag and drop the resources folder. Click enter, it's once again gonna ask for your computer login password that you use to log into your Mac. And just like that, after you click enter, Sliver is ready to use. So we can close out a terminal, close out of all of these windows, and go into our applications folder and find Sliver. And just like this, we are inside of the brand new AppleTech 752 Bypass Tool version 5.5. I've added a ton of new features to this application, which I'm gonna be discussing in more detail in later videos. But for now, let's go into super special options and select A5 factory activation. This is the one we're gonna be using today. So I have my iPod Touch fifth generation connected right here. I did actually already delete setup.app. So as you can see, I am on the home screen and everything is working fine, except for the activation lock in iTunes and we're gonna be fixing that. So let's click on select device, iPod Touch 5, and start. And it's telling us only to load the RAM disk, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So let's continue. And in order to prepare for the RAM disk, we're gonna use our Arduino setup. So let's first enter PondDFU mode by holding the power and the home button. Then let go of the power and keep holding the home. And as soon as iTunes tells us that we are in DFU mode, we can go ahead and connect to our Arduino. There we go. Now let's quit iTunes. And I've got my Arduino board right here. And I'm gonna unplug the device from the computer and plug it into my Arduino board. There we go. And now I'm gonna plug my Arduino into the computer. There we go, there's the three red lights. Let's wait about five to 10 seconds and we should get the final solid LED. There we go. Now we can go ahead and disconnect the Arduino from the computer, pull out our USB cable, set this aside, and plug our device back into our Mac. 
And at this point, we may get another iTunes pop-up. Go ahead and quit iTunes. And we're going to load the standard RAM disk or the alternate one, whichever works best for you. You may get one to two more iTunes pop-ups. After the second one, just like this, you can quit iTunes. And here is the standard RAM disk booting on the screen right now. So we can click back to go to the main screen. And now we're going to relay device info. And just like this, TCP is ready to use. And we will prepare the file system. And that successfully mounted it so that we can actually access the contents of the RAM disk. Got it. And now let's factory activate iOS 9.3.5. And I will mention this does not work on 8.4.1. It does, however, work on 9.3.5 and 9.3.6. So let's jump into it. As you can see, only use macOS High Sierra or Mojave. Watch the tutorial. Hopefully you're watching right now so you know what you're doing. And then, yeah, use 9.3.5 or 9.3.6. Let's continue. And just like this, our device is rebooting. And the necessary files have been installed for a full factory activation. So we can go ahead and disconnect our device right now. And I'll be back on Windows where we're actually going to activate the device and make iTunes fully working. As you can see, we booted right up to the home screen. Now that we are back on Windows and the device booted up, I'm going to go ahead and connect it to my PC. Just like this. And let's open up iTunes. I just want to show you that we are still activation locked at the moment in iTunes. So we have the little device pop up right here and activation lock. There it is. So we're going to be fixing that. I'm going to go ahead and close out of iTunes and now we can open up this A5 factory activator application. Double click it. If it's a zip file, unzip it and extract the contents and click on A5 Windows Bypass.exe. Just like this is the nice tool made by IFPDZ. So we can go ahead and click on A5 Bypass. It's telling us it's bypassing. And just like this, our device was activated successfully. So we can now close the application and you won't believe this. Let's open up iTunes and see the incredible result. Check it out, guys. Welcome to your new iPod continue. We can now use iTunes on this device. As you can see, it's actually syncing our iPod and we can get started. This is incredible. We are on 9.3.5, bypassed and using iTunes. Now, let me go into the music application and I'm going to show you that we currently don't have any music on the device. Let's change that. Let's put some music on here. I'm inside music right now and I'm just going to select sync music, entire music library, because of course I only have one song on my PC, and we'll click on apply. And it's going to go ahead and sync and put the song into the music app. There we go. As you can see, the item was copied right here. Now let me disconnect the device and we're going to play the song. We can go home, can even lock the device. And here it is, right on the lock screen, guys. We have music on this iPod. So that's awesome. Now we have music inside the music app, but a lot of you probably want to take it a step further and actually jailbreak the device with Phoenix. Unfortunately, you cannot sign Phoenix without an Apple developer account, and Apple developer accounts are expensive. They're $99 per year to gain access to 100 UDID registrations for every type of device. So you can register 100 iPods, 100 iPads, and 100 iPhones. 
And what registering a device allows you to do is use Cydia Impactor to install whatever app you want. Normally Cydia Impactor is broken, won't let you install anything, but if you have an Apple developer account and you register your UDID, you can install any app that you'd like, including Phoenix. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You have to head over to Apple Developer Program, which is developer.apple.com slash programs, and click this blue button up here that says Enroll. And this is where it's gonna ask you for an Apple ID with two-factor authentication enabled, and then you're gonna to have to pay that $99 to make your own developer account. And then you can head over to developer.apple.com slash account slash resources slash devices slash add. This is after you've already signed up and you can actually register the UDID of your device. So down here, as you can see, we'll select the platform as iOS and device name. We can just call it like Apple Tech iPod or something like that. And then just paste in your device UDID. You can find this from 3U tools and then you can just click on register. And then of course, the last thing you're gonna to need to do is generate an app specific password. So if you go to appleid.apple.com slash account slash manage, then you can find where it says app specific passwords and generate password. So we're gonna generate something, we'll call it like Phoenix Pass or something, the password that we're gonna use for Phoenix. And we'll click on create. And then it's going to go ahead and give us this long string here. Go ahead and copy it, control C. And now we are done with this part and we can actually go into City Impactor and sign our jailbreak application. So I'm going to launch Impactor right here and it found our iPod just like this. And I have the Phoenix 5 IPA, which you can download from phoenixpond.com or just Google it and drag and drop that into CD Impactor. And at this point, it's going to ask for your Apple ID. So enter the Apple ID that belongs to your paid developer account. And then you'll want to paste in the app specific password. So do control V. And that is the password we generated in Google Chrome. When we clicked on generate password, that is the password we're pasting in right here. So we can click on OK. And this is going to go ahead and sign Phoenix and install it on our home screen. And just like this, we have Phoenix on our home screen as a result of our developer account and City Impactor. So we can open up Phoenix and prepare for the jailbreak. So that's about it guys for this tutorial. I showed you how to put music inside the music app. You can also put movies on through iTunes. And if you have a developer account, you can jailbreak with Phoenix. One last thing I forgot to mention is that the bypass that allows you to put music into the music app is tethered. So while the Arduino bypass is always gonna be untethered, meaning you're never ever gonna go back to the setup assistant, when you reboot your device, you're no longer gonna be able to put music into the music app. All the music you already put there will still be inside of it and you'll still be able to play it and use it and all that. You just can't use iTunes after you reboot. And the easy fix to that is just to open up the F activator and run this program one more time and that's gonna go ahead and activate your device again so you can keep using iTunes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I have all sorts of new videos on the way showing you how to use the latest and greatest features that Sliver has to offer. So stay tuned for those. Check out the blog on my website if you wanna learn more about how all this stuff works. And until next time, peace out.